Human family, thank you for tuning in. I'm Keenan White, and I'll be sharing stories, dialogues, and methodologies for leading a conscious, abundant life. To me, luminous is a word that connects us to our vital life force energy and soul essence. Your bioluminosity is a barometer for health, a gauge for abundance, true prosperity, and a luminous way of life. In this podcast, I hope you find a more effortless way of tuning into the wisdom of your body, soul, and spirit. We'll explore the many faces of medicine, creativity, and self-mastery as it evolves and spans into esoteric and ancient wisdom and modern paradigm shifts in consciousness. Welcome, Kyle. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, the listeners. This is Keenan, your host from the Luminous Possibilities podcast. I'm feeling very electric right now, like feeling very activated around Kyle's energy field. Every time I come in his presence, I feel this kind of activation within my energy. Um, and it's an honor to be here with you, brother. It's been a long time coming before we sit down and have a chat together and get to re- hit, hit record. We've had many conversations. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how many times have we had conversations where we're like, wow, we should have been recording this the whole time. And um, so many. You know, yeah, so many. So, you know, I'm grateful to be on your podcast and it's an honor. And thank you for providing the space and sharing with all the beautiful other hosts that you have. And I'm excited to to cover our topics. Yeah, looking forward to diving in. Today, we're going to really talk about just what it's like to live a conscious life and dive into some of the more like kind of daily kind of mindset, body, somatic, heart resonant, um, and also just awareness pieces around living consciously. Um, I'll give you a little introduction too. So Kyle's an integrative healer. He's an embodiment and integration guide. He's an entheogenic medicine teacher and retreat leader. And he perpetually learns and expands his healing capabilities through this deep love of human alchemy. How's that sound, Kyle? Do you want to add anything to that? Pretty solid. No, I have nothing to add. It's all very spot on. Yeah, you got a pretty huge background in the healing world, psychology, inner work, this integral connection between the heart, body, mind, and spirit. And a lot of this has been your own personal practice, your dedicated embodiment practices. And we've had just so many conversations around, you know, your affinity and resonance with the tantric lineages and divine union and we've both been talking about our own unions coming together and being initiated by that so uh, we'll see if any of that might arise in this conversation but for now I think we just kind of started off with some simple pieces around what it means to live consciously to you and what you might be able to share from your your unique background and how you're living now yeah yeah I'd love to share I mean I grew up I mean the first 20 years of my life 21 years of my life, I was not living consciously. I was not aware everything down to, you know, I was a collegiate athlete and I still didn't really know a lot about nutrition as I do now or herbalism or any of these other tools that we can use to really optimize ourselves. And um, it took a a pretty solid journey in, uh, in Laguna Beach for, it was a mushroom journey. And it kind of just blew the doors off of everything and uh, started this path for me of basically systematically finding what was not expanding my consciousness, what was not actually supporting my highest well-being and the, the highest well-being of all that is. And everything from nutrition, what I was using to hydrate myself, the friends group that I was with, uh, the supplements I was taking, you know, all of these things, it was just... It, I wouldn't say it's all, it was all wrong, but, you know, kind of was, you know, it's, it, was, it was part of my path. And that was, you know, as a, a facilitator of plant medicine or a shaman, you know, we get initiated through life. You know, there's not a curriculum to this. And because each individual soul has their own karma, their own uh, sanskaras, which are like the imprints from other lives getting carried forward. And so I had a very unique um path of learning but learning from uh, my my logical mind is very 
analytical and very uh, psychology based. And so in, in ways I can see how I overcomplicated things for myself, but it also allowed me to learn from all of these different perspectives so that I could develop the vocabulary to share with people. And um, yeah, a, a lot of it just habits and even just going out with the boys and drinking on the weekends, you know, like just little things like that. As I started removing these habits and I had this free time, I created the time for myself, you know, and that's, I feel like a big thing for people is, oh, I don't have time for that. It's like, well, are you the creator of your own reality or are you just, you know, on the roller coaster just strapped in? You know, and so the, the idea is Big one. when you develop a sense of self-worth and connection to your multidimensional biology, essentially, you know, your system is going to tell you, like, that's not good for me anymore. Or this needs to be, something needs to be taken away and something needs to be added or something needs to be deepened in, in understanding and practice. and. Um, embodiment practice is such a huge thing and I practiced Buddhism for a couple of years Kundalini yoga yoga you know I tried all of these different things and I think the, the basis of living consciously is really finding what works for your system and what like you know we've seen it in the medicine space what's your medicine and uh, being able to develop that uh, but being able to have the open mind and uh, suspend the disbelief of our ego, uh, which is going to resist us the entire way and um, be open to trying new things so that we, even if it doesn't work, even if oh, it's like hot yoga, that's not my thing, you know, or whatever it is, that's not your thing. That's okay. You know, you'll find something that's your thing. And when it doesn't feels good in you, less spiritual. doesn't mean you're less spiritual for going your own way and playing an instrument instead of meditating or chanting or doing yoga or whatever. Totally. Totally. And, um, you know, chanting work, the, the changing of, and the use of vibration as it goes through your vocal cords and imprints your cells. I mean, it works, you know, but it might not just be in people's vocabulary or in their vernacular for this lifetime. And, um, I've learned that with plant medicine work, like not every soul, necessarily needs the catalyst of plant medicine to evolve consciously um, and so yeah the, the things that changed within me were really uh you know these main questions like what am i giving my attention to uh news media social media social groups pop culture friends you know all these things that our ego you know our, our ego's defense mechanism is well i don't want to be ostracized from the community at large uh, for its own survival. And so it just follows along just to try to keep pace, you know? And so trying to really pull yourself out of that, because essentially you think of it like consumption, you're consuming information, you're intaking information and stimuli, and your body is adapting all the time to whatever the stimulus is. And so being able to see what you're giving your attention to and then changing that changing maybe your where you're getting your information from or learning to meditate and connect with source or prime creator universal intelligence and learning to get our information from our internal source uh, get our information oh if that's you know healthline says that's good for my body uh, but it's like you know we can muscle test ourselves and find out what's good for our body and what our body wants in any given moment and just learning those things is is very important. Um, and what are we giving our money to? Um, you know, our, in, in the modern system, like where we put our money is almost like a vote. You know, if you don't like something, then stop paying for it. You know, stop going that direction. Uh, and then the, the products, the clothing, the food, the supplements that we're paying for, uh, what we're initially essentially putting in our bodies, you know, if it's not supporting your overall health and well-being, and you're just and granted, you know, it's all in. Uh, what do they say? All in. Uh, I'm blanking yeah, on the right. word, but it's like I mean, you can you can drink alcohol once in a while, or you can do something once in a while. All in. Uh, 
like I'm blanking on the word. All in moderation. Yeah, all in moderation. Thank you. Um, and and finding, you know, why are you working to earn money to pay for things that are not ultimately making you healthier, better, more evolved, and are inevitably degrading your health and killing you faster. Um, and then uh, what are you giving your breath to? You know, if you're doing something outside of yourself, and this is kind of the step one of conscious living is being fully present in our bodies and um, getting rid of the habits that are causing us to disassociate from our bodies and lose track of our breath. I, I see it in, even you, if you're out and someone's on their phone and their body just lets in like this huge gasp for air because they haven't been breathing for like 30 seconds. You're like, wow, they're like they really like lost track. They completely dissociated. And um, those little habits um, build up. Um, and then uh, something I've been, I've known about the patterns more, but I'm learning more about the vocabulary of the dopaminergic pathways and how essentially our body becomes from a very young age addicted to our own dopamine. And so we're doing things, habits and patterns we're creating that are keeping us locked in these dopamine cycles, dopaminergic systems. And, um, but the, the temporary satisfaction of the body's addiction to its own neurotransmitters, most of those things are ultimately not fulfilling in the long run. Um, and this uh, for people in general, pornography, you know, can be fun and great education or, you know, you can look at it in a different way. But pornography, for example, is a tidal wave of dopamine to the body and completely skews our perception of actual intimacy and connection um, and and what it is actually like to be in the present moment with another being that you're actually connected with and not just lusting after, but connected with. And if you're in a snowball effect of that pattern, you get into a real intimate connection and your body doesn't actually know what to do. And it's ultimately not fulfilling. Um, but other things like social media and these other things that are just the, the death scroll, you know, it's essentially like you're just triggering dopamine receptors in the body. And we're all, I mean, many of us are, uh, many of us do it more than we know but it's just becoming you know living consciously is becoming aware of the pattern and then catching it first we become aware of it oh crap I, I did that again you know and then it gets catch yourself a few times and then you start learning to catch yourself before it happens you're like oh put my phone down do something else with my time um yeah it's kind of like widening that gap a little bit to where you have a little bit more awareness and yeah like 85 percent of healing is really about awareness Yes. And noticing, I think like the thing that stands out to me in, in terms of what you're saying is like this piece, like the powerful piece about just bringing your awareness into your body. And we have these like, you know, these energy centers, I mean, chakras, whatever you want to call them, but you know, there's other, there's almost kind of like portals into our body for us to experience illumination or, you know, a kind of enlightenment process Yes. And now scientifically, they're talking about these strands of DNA that are curled up and they're, they're, you know, they're like miles long. And when we soften and we actually like come into the somatic experience and bring our awareness into the body, then we can actually like experience this kind of like slowing down and relaxing and, and easing into this unraveling of these DNA fragments and strands of light that literally send like energy up into our body and into our experience and into the sensory world to yes. where we're being illuminated by literal light packets like light yep. intelligent packets of light in our dna yep. i mean just yep. thinking about it like that like uh, it was a recent thing for me and i was i just kind of blown away to, to think about this like journey that we're on always of like you know well, if we're, if those people, whoever is out there, including myself, that's looking to live more consciously and intentionally, then like, what does that really mean? And we can get like into so many different areas of like um, exploring that. And then like, I think like what you're saying is important about this piece about just simply where's your awareness going, right? Because in a very simple level, like bringing that into the body 
and just allowing us to soften into like what? Well, really like this experience of the fabric of reality, which is ultimately love mm-hmm. and anything that is not that, which the mind is this kind of like mechanism, like a, a master like mechanism for resisting the softening into like the, the experience of w- what it is as our true nature, which is love. Yes. And that, that like process is, is so blissful. Like it's a, it's a, um, it's a really pleasurable experience to, to just come into the body. And I have to check myself all the time when I'm like looking at social media or things catch my attention and I'll disassociate. And I mean, there, there's everything vying for our attention. And I think like living consciously is so important, particularly in this day and age for that reason, because we're, we're in, in kind of like a war for our attention. Totally. That's marketing 101. I think marketing was developed by like a relative of Freud, you know, or, or originally. And he's like, well, my cousin says this is how the psychology or the psychology of the ego work. This is how to create a system to where it uses those mechanisms against itself to, to keep your attention. And, uh, you know, the, you're you're absolutely right. It is a fight for attention all the time. Even the even if you can be watching, if you do watch TV and you're not streaming something, you know, even if you could press mute during the commercials and look away for a while, you know, just little things like that. You know, working your way into it. It doesn't have to be drastic, but these little one degree course corrections start adding up, uh, and it really influences our body's connection with ourselves. And that's, you know, you're mentioning like the somatic experience and so much of our everyday culture pulls us out of our body in, in our awareness and our focus. And our body is just really wanting to be chosen. You know, it's like it creates symptoms of dis-ease to get your attention back. Right. And, you know, it's really like, hey, this is going on or you're holding this emotion in this part of your body. You think it's pain or you think it's disease or whatever it is. And whether it's Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, even uh, First Nations, Indigenous American, you know, they believed in the root of a root of a lot of disease stems from the harboring of emotions. Uh, and so just being aware of those emotions. And we were talking about that kind of opening that gap. Um, and the other the other part of where as soon as we start bringing our awareness into us, we start really seeing where our reactions are coming from and that we are just reacting to begin with instead of responding and whether it's a trauma response or if it's something to where your nervous system gets dysregulated you know fight flight freeze bond whatever it is um, and there's specific character and uh, psychological and emotional physical traits that are associated with those patterns of essentially going into fight or flight or um, yeah. about o- opening that gap and just, you know, being able to go, Oh, you know, when this person's, because it's, again, it's an, another part of conscious living is there's no more like this person made me feel this, you know, it's about radical self accountability and responsibility and even changing the linguistics. They teach this in conscious relating, but it's when you said this, I felt this instead of you made me feel this immediately giving our power away. When you said this, I felt this and then feeling into that emotion and and whether it's just bookmarking it, you don't have to go into meditation during the conversation, but bookmark it. And and when you're reflecting on your day later in life or later in the day, rather you're going, what was that feeling? You know, what was it? And, and you can get back to the root of these traumas and it's usually parental or the first few romantic relationships of our life that, um, you know, the formation of our ego and the formation of the different masks our ego creates when we're around our parents, when we're around our lovers, when we're around our, you know, these are just masks. And the mask is a dual mask too, because you're perceiving through it as well as what you're trying to show to others. Um, and just being nice aware of being aware of that and you know when you when you go to the gym and all of a sudden you're like a thousand feet tall and you're like macho and you know like oh and when you're around your lover or when you're around your in-laws you know like whatever just noticing these little changes in your personality um, and it's ultimately 
personality, it's persona. It's not identity. Um, and that's a lot of the, you know, the deeper yogic traditions and Buddhist traditions and um, ultimately coming back to the part of us that identifies as formless awareness and infinite and eternal. And um, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a practice that can, it can make a lot of these other changes more e efficient because as you stop identifying with your ego and all the, the desires and all the perceptions and beliefs and narratives of whether it's personal, ancestral, cultural conditioning, um, all these layers that cause us to perceive reality in a specific way, or you think you want something, but like your ego wants something, but your soul or you as a soul, and actually like that doesn't mean anything to me. It's, it has no use function. Um, yeah, but actually... as you practice, um, the Sad Yoga Institute is really awesome. If you check out the Sad Yoga Institute YouTube, they have, um, they, they mention, um, meditations of essentially pulling your awareness back to or pulling your focus back to being awareness and just uh, you you gain a little bit of detachment to allow yourself to observe your thoughts and observe your emotions and observe the things that are coming up in your beliefs and instead of your focus being in those things and identifying by those things it pulls you out and it's it's been something for me that has helped drastically um, even very recently um, but just the, all of these things culminate into the idea to live consciously is to live with intention and not just to be on autopilot um, and so doing something easy practices for people you know wake up in the morning give yourself an hour before you look at your phone uh, give you give that hour that time to choose your body and your awareness and focus on that whether it's meditation or visualization or yoga or even stretching, just those little things can changing that little blip of the morning can change the director, the trajectory of your entire day. And as you start practicing that more and more, um, that, that really, really helps. Um, and when your focus isn't always outward and it, it's, it's like, it's like your, your focus is inward, but you're still paying attention to outward. You're not totally spaced out um, or spaced in. But you know, your focus then becomes almost dual in nature where you're able to perceive external stimuli and how your system reacts or responds to it and start learning how to respond. Yeah, I think that, that idea of creating greater responsibility it can sometimes seem well oh, i don't want to i've thought this to myself sometimes like i don't want to you know take on like too much responsibility and that being kind of a pattern that's tied to like feeling over responsible for things as a kid mm -hmm. but that response ability is just your ability to respond consciously instead of like falling into the trap of the reaction or the re reactive or repressive tendency to yes. be able to ultimately stay safe but that staying safe is not it's just you know that your familiarity that goes along the, with the pattern yeah comfort zone which you know i i guess it's kind of where the autopilot tends to, to kind of creep in yes. you know, we, get, we go kind of back to sleep a little bit and like what i'm just feeling from you you know you expressing all these these pieces and providing these distinctions and clarity around conscious living is is just this very core piece around like you're just being awake you know <laughs> you're you're just waking up from the dream that somehow life is you know like got you at the whims of it and and you know realizing that you are co-creating your reality and i think we 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 definitely there can be like a trap to kind of just look to the mirror that is our external world to say like, well, you know, it's this thing or it's that thing or it's this person or it's that other person, but really like it's a reflection of how we're relating to reality, to ourself, right. to, to our thoughts, to our emotions, to our body. And I just love how you point to this idea of like choosing your body because mm -hmm. choosing your body is, I mean, just from that place, like that, just that alone in the morning, 
um, and thinking about that is like changing the direction of your of your life is such a big deal. Yes, yeah, and people, you know, in the modern, the new age, which is not really new. Um, there's some new age stuff that is fairly new, but there's a lot of it that is just the assimilation of ancient texts and ancient information brought forth in a new contextualization, maybe something more uh, easily digestible for the Western mind or the modern mind. Um, you know, a lot of these practices are profound for people and these understandings of both the ancient, the modern and bringing in the future, you know, and so I, I feel like a big part of our our purpose is to bring in the new information. And that can only really happen when we're really connected in with our awareness and we're getting direct connection from source or prime creator or God, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's it's always a, it's a it's a very feminine practice. Uh, and even in Hinduism and, and in uh, Buddhism, you know, the initial catalyst, even like the Kundalini awakening, is an activation of feminine energy. And it is a, an ascending spiral. So it's a just explosion in the system. Um, for men, particularly, you know, with living a, living consciously, men and women need to understand their masculine and feminine polarities and how and their inner relationship with their masculine and feminine polarities generally people develop their masculine is around their father and how their father distributes or uh how their father demonstrated masculinity and how their mother demonstrated femininity um, and so they're living from a a false pretense unless you, your mother or father were yogis or plant medicine people or just very awake people and outliers generally. Uh, but this, this perception of our living consciously and intentionally of wanting to know ourselves as our infinite expansive self, the, the supreme self, not the lower uh, lowercase s self. Um, is, is very important. And as we start the, the inner work and purification internally, you know, we really start getting to understand the, you know, uh, how Carl Jung talked about our anima and our animus, our, our feminine and masculine qualities and who we learn those from and how those are ultimately limiting us and how to transmute them. Because it's all ultimately we, think of love um, and compassion as a transmutational energy and so when we think of the, the destruction of the ego it is uh, not that our, we're just like letting it go and discarding it we're essentially almost like assimilating it back into the part of us um, and as we start doing these practices to pull our awareness out of our ego and into our supreme sense of self, uh, all, all of these other things start becoming much smaller, much uh, um, lesser issues, so to say, you know, because our, our ego and our the unconscious aspect of our shadow, uh, the repressed aspects or wounded aspects, you know, they set, they, they're megalomaniacs, you know, they really just think like they're the biggest deal ever. And this is like the, the mountain and the rock that you're going to be pushing up this hill forever. And um, as you start panning out, your old perception is like darkness. And you're just like, especially going through darker times, we just think we're in darkness. And so I like to think of it like as we pan back our focus, that darkness gets so small in contrast to the totality of who and what we are that it goes from like being in this like bottomless pit to like your, your shadow is like a freckle on your arm. Like it really is like not that big of a deal, but because we've been only operating from our ego and unconscious shadow aspects for so long, we just think it's everything or we think it's just such a big deal. Um, but all starting with intention um, is, a, is a powerful tool 
And uh, so many of the practices of consciousness and evolution are we, we master these aspects of feminine and, and masculine qualities uh, to create a union inside of ourselves. And that, that union inside of ourselves, and generally every soul has a different ratio, but you, most souls either have a masculine or a feminine core uh, with a different proportion of the opposite polarity. And so as we start to transmute ourselves and going back to what you shared in the beginning of, you know, my, my biggest passion in life is human alchemy and just knowing that humans are multidimensional and um, multifaceted, you know, the, the, the alchemical process of turning the base metals, this carbon based physical body into white um, is the is the main core you know but we have to understand that our our ego our shadow particularly will try to slow us down at any cost because it, it the, the 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 self-realization of your supreme awareness is like in the ego's mind or in the ego's perception it's like worst nightmare and so there's going to be it's almost like pull, pull, pulling a kid out of the room and he's like clawing the floor. It's like, no, I don't want to go. I just want to continue <laughs> suffering. I want to continue creating karma for myself because that's all I've ever known. And I'm addicted and, to the uh, <laughs> Totally. And, right. and addicted, addicted to the suffering um, and just thinking that that is life. Uh, that life is this like pendulum between suffering and pleasure and, and back and forth and um, all of these all of these things to apply in our daily life are just, it's almost like Jenga pieces that are just allowing those old structures to fall. And then having the, the self-awareness of really learning what works for your system, especially working on the somatic work and what works for my body um, is the, is the building back up, you know, and it's never just an absolute destruction and a complete rebuild. It's more of a, uh, a renovation so to say for a lot of people until you get into a divine union like you and i and you know it is a full complete destruction um <laughs> it, it really is uh everyone's path is different and the most important thing is to find where your path is and what actually works for you yeah i love that and yeah it's like we we actually do want i think the experience of this like incredibly expansive um, miraculous like synchronicity of all that is that's moving through us and that we are all unified with it and to get to experience this like deep peace and joy and bliss that comes along with that and then in our egoic identity structure our, our tendency to identify with or the persona the the pieces of that ego structure of the masks whatever it is you know we can get caught and it just appears as if that is who we are and then that, that i actually want this and i actually don't want that and that like wanting and don't wanting is like that swing in the pendulum that can keep you stuck and even in within like spiritual communities and healing um spaces you know there's a tendency i think to to need to find out like what created the pattern and where did it come from and how do I break it down? And, and that can be, I mean, I've done that too, tons, right? <laughs> We've been there, right? Been there together oh. and it's fun. It's actually like kind of enjoyable to, to trace back the root and then be like, Oh, that is where it came from. But even all of that is a, as a kind of narrative and story. Yes. And I think like, it just, it also comes back to this like simple component of like, you know, and, within all of that, like not that that doesn't matter or it's not important and it doesn't have relevance because there is a, a kind of architecture within all of that that deserves to have its space. But ultimately like having that awareness, which I think can be something we place kind of in our external field of our awareness to, to this greater connection to all that is or going like deeper within to experience the same thing but just from a different level like within our heart or within the, the core of our being yes that that ultimately does transcend all of that 
so it's it's not to, to skip the steps of the growth and, and the, all the integration because all that's so important. But I, I think sometimes we like I've overcomplicated it. I'll speak for myself in terms Same. of that. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like as coaches and guides, we we do that so that we can learn the ins and outs. We can learn the the, the meanders that happen on our path to like the most efficient evolution possible. And we, uh, the trial and error, the troubleshooting of different paths and different techniques and all these things I think are necessary for the trailblazers. You know, we're, we wouldn't be trailblazers if it was just like the well-beaten path. Of, like so true. Oh, not everyone can live in an ashram and just focus on self-realization all the time. Uh, and just everything else is taken care of for us and all we have to do is serve and you know work around the ashram and serve our swami or our guru or whatever it is and um, that's the, the ultimate idea of living consciously for the general population that's still dealing with the third dimensional uh, ob- obligatory things um, that's when the, the time management comes into alignment and the decisiveness and the, the masculine traits and really like even something as like even something as simple as taking a moment to pause and regulate your nervous system in between the things that you're doing uh, so if you're going and working out and then you're like get in the car drive home make food go to work whatever it is like in there's little blips five minutes you can take in those spaces so that your parasympathetic nervous system has time to reactivate and your breathing has time to reactivate because that, that all impacts on a, on a daily practice. You know, that impacts your digestion, that uh, it impacts your immunity, it impacts all of these different physiological functions that if you're just snowballing and not taking that moment to pause and to do the belly breathing and recenter yourself, get out of your head, back into your heart. Um, it, yeah. it, it adds up, you know, that's why there's so many dudes with ED or balding or, you know, such low uh, libido in many people. It's you know, a lot of it is uh, cortisol. And a lot of it is just a dysregulated nervous system. And the body is not prioritizing pleasure and reproduction because it's in fight or flight. Yeah, I can't I can't come close to that because it's got to yeah. you know, at least you know keep the heart protected, and that's why our diaphragm tends to shut down here, oh. just kind of oh. keep all the energy up in our heart space, and then people have digestive issues, talk oh. about ED or whatever is going on in the womb space, yeah. all it's being negatively affected there because we're just you know impacted by that neurochemical like imbalance, and I mean, yes. all the number one. Um, you know, chemical that blocks a, a healthy amount of testosterone for men as well. Yes. Just like your drive and, you know, your inspiration and your sex drive and everything. Mm-hmm. If you're running cortisol all the time, you're not going to clearly not going to, you know, have your body's not going to actually biologically, physiologically be able to take care of that. Yes. Functions. Yeah. And then that you, you brilliantly mentioned earlier that response ability, that ability to respond when we're in that hyper adrenalized sympathetic dominant state, there is no response. There's no time for response. Yeah. You know, you're in reaction. You're yeah. in like, <laughs> you're in like getting chased by a saber tooth tiger or like being in a foxhole in Fallujah. Like that's where your nervous system's at. You know, there's no time to respond. There's no time to actually feel into what needs to be done instead of just the automatic mechanisms of the ego of the, of the mental the mental mind not the cosmic mind um, manas like in buddhism the lower manas and the higher manas or the, the higher and lower mind and you know a lot of these practices are it's like a you're breaking yourself out of the prison that you didn't know you were in and <laughs> like as soon as you just accept that and just have compassion for yourself and the greater awareness that this is going back to the things you've mentioned a lot, Keenan, with existential kink, uh, just like, Oh, this is happening because a part of me subconsciously wanted this to happen. I wanted to experience poverty. I wanted to experience suffering. I wanted to experience rejection because of 
these shadow narratives that are going on to prove my shadow and my ego right, that I'm unworthy or unfit or incapable or whatever it is. Um, but coming, coming at it with compassion and saying, Oh, like I, I, I think the practice is like, I acknowledge any part of me that wants to suffer, you know, and just being with yeah. that and, and feeling into that. And, and I know enjoying like, the pleasure of it. <laughs> right. Right. Cause there's a, a deep down, there is a desire to experience it. And, um, that's when we go from, cause we're always, whether we're conscious or unconscious, we're creating our reality. Um, and then you, manifestation is like an equation it's not just a like i think of this and this happens there's karma there's like all these other things that are put into this algebraic equation of your everyday experience but you know coming back to living consciously is being aware of that equation more and more and doing what you can to add the inputs of what you have control over um and the meditation, like the, it's called Atma Vichara. Uh, and it was a famous uh, yogi that kind of highlighted this in a lot of uh, Sadhguru and the Sad uh, Yoga Institute. And they talk about coming back into our Atma, which is their version of the higher self, the Buddha nature, um, whatever it is. Um, but the second we start operating in that state, karma starts to dissolve and the, the the ego's reactions and mechanisms that are like the autopilot are, are actually what is creating karma and not not able to perceive karma happening in our life um, and taking responsibility of like man i must have did something you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's something to, to create this or, you know, little patterns I created or little things that I did or didn't do to create this experience. Again, the, the radical self-responsibility are very important. But coming back to what do I, what can I do in this present moment and what is my next step is the, you know, I have my vision of what I want to create. What's my next step and, and relying on, meditative practices of reconnecting with the heart and the intuition and your vital force energy, the gene chi, the sexual energy to reflect that in the direction that you want to create is, uh, is huge going more back into the tantric uh, tradition and uh, Taoist tradition and things like that. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful energy. It's the same energy that's creating star systems and galaxies and it, we're just a little filament of our soul stream that can channel that energy uh, compared to say a celestial body, like a planet or a star. Um, and so yeah, going back to that, what am I giving my energy to the lust and attachment and fantasy? Those are just like misfires. You're just directing your energy in all these different directions. And as you start acknowledging and taking care of those things and letting those go and pulling that energy back, awesome practice of calling all of your energy back to you um, and working with people like yourself or me to actually remove cords and attachments to other people in the energy exchanges that are going on you know most people are if you think of the human system as a as a the, the human organism as a battery you know most people are running at low like drastically low uh, they're not actually you know on a uh, mitochondrial level on a the the expansion of light and frequency out of the dna uh, most people many people are running from a very low state and these patterns dopaminergic pathway habits of just like being in the autopilot doing what feels good in the moment which is you know addiction um, and the lust and attachment those are all things that are essentially just like spreading your energy out um, and so, you know, I, I like the, they call it no fap, you know, it's like a gr group of men that are working on educating other men, stop watching pornography, you know, on, and on an esoteric level, you know, they're essentially stopping that spraying of their sexual energy. Think of it like a, a rattle can of spray paint and they're like, Ooh, she's hot. Ooh, I want that. Ooh, I want that fame. I want that 
whatever it is, you know, lust isn't just sexual. It's lust for power, lust for fame, status, all of these things that our culture has taught to be very important, but universally have abs- absolutely no value whatsoever to us as souls. Um, yeah, it's not too so, different from like greed as an energy because it's it's like anything that you want is like, ah, like that. I want that. It's almost, and there's a kind of scarcity that goes along with that. And then totally. it's like some, somehow I need that or I want that because I don't have enough, which is just really another way of saying I'm actually cut off from my like my divine energy source my my true resource that is really the thing that i want and that all these things like you're saying like the attachments are like i i kind of just get this visual of like all these wires wrapping around the battery and oh yeah super tart tight wires just kind of crunching down on the battery and blocking oh, yeah. it off from its flow and really like we have the ability to charge our battery at any moment and plug yes. into like this you know greater awareness mm-hmm. of love yes. as a nature essentially yes exactly exactly and then on a biological level plugging into mother earth and, and grounding and getting that ion exchange going and, and repowering yeah. our either we get it from food or we get negative ions from uh, running water waterfalls waves beaches you know things like that Ener- areas of a high density of negative ions that are just atmospheric um, they're in a, a gaseous state or, or they're trapped in the oxygen or trapped in the the gases in the air from a waterfall or waves breaking or stream or um, yeah. you know, being able to take in those negative ions are, is a way of also repowering the battery um, yeah. and so yeah. most, most Go ahead. I was going to say most people are, you know, going back into what, what are you spending your money on? Spending my money on these dope sneakers with rubber soles that are essentially just cutting off my connection to Earth on an electrical level and depleting my system as I just burst my energy towards anything my ego wants. And instead of being plugged in, focusing your energy on what is truly serving you, and being able to identify and have compassion for just the, the habits that are they're happening because you have ultimately created them one way or another, whether you adopted it from your parents or the culture or your friends groups, you know, and then just being able to pull that back and go, Oh, okay. And that was kind of the main with my at 21 years old, that big journey I had was, was that kind of, resolution for me of like i am done wasting my time my money my energy my attention on anything that is not allowing me to be in my fullest state and and ultimately who i need to be to fulfill my purpose because the the how and the what i need to do is all just comes to me when when we're in that state and um it's just very very important for us and coming into this, you know, in the end, if you look at Hindu culture or Buddhist culture or uh, Native American culture, as they're talking about this, the coming of the new earth, the new age, this, uh, the procession of the equinox, you know, we're really at a time in our cultural civilization, species, planetary level where we're kind of reaching like finals. You know, we're in like, we're almost at graduation. And now is the time that many souls are just spontaneously awakening because the the timer's up. It's like, oh, shit, I better get on it because this window is closing and I need to be at a certain state of of resonance to to be able to make that transition without having to die or without having the death of my human organism and to incarnate again in a higher higher frequency human organism to experience that reality and um and it's not a it's not mm-hmm. a doom and gloom thing but it's uh it's more of like a what are you choosing a, yeah what are you choosing not everyone makes it through graduation you know, you know there's graduations every year in universities and schools all around the world and not everyone makes it and so the ones that applied themselves and the ones that made the changes necessary and learned the things necessary and 
granted this is the the school of life and it's not a indoctrination system uh but it's kind of in that same sense it's it takes the changing internally to change the outer reality and, and that's happening on an individual and collective level more than ever before um, but but it's an exciting time because there's we'll get into this on our next cosmic episode but there's just there's, there's more energy now available to us than there has been in tens of thousands of years um, and we'll we'll get into that get into that later <laughs> I love it well I love <laughs> I think the thing I was just going to mention was that piece about connecting to the earth. Cause I think like at the end of the day, doing this conscious work and the inner work, it can be simple. And yet, you know, we can also limit ourselves. Like I've limited myself in even just meditating and wanting to, to create a deeper connection to like love as, an, as a supreme energy that permeates everything. And then, yes when I'm just in my house or I've got rubber shoes on or, you know, I, the shoe thing is so funny. Cause it's like, we're, we can be so subtly separated, you know, and, and to, to just fall slightly into the illusion of like, Oh, it's just me, the tiny me, that the small self over here, like yeah. has, has to deal with all my, where's all my energy or where did all, where did it all go? Or where all the time go when like, really we're actually timeless or infinite or limitless. Yes beings and and i just love the piece about the nature because I, I think it's an important piece around just being able to use the, the the harmony and the resonance within nature to facilitate whatever process needs to happen i mean out of all the different ways you can you know create an inner resilience in your life i think the the primary foundation is just to spend a little bit of time in nature like put yes. your feet into the earth and just allow that like the shamanic resonance of the earth to just overtake all those other frequencies and remind you. And it's almost like you can fall asleep in a meadow and wake up and remember <laughs> like, Oh, I am actually connected to all that is. And, yes. you know, you can just kind of get siloed, I think, in, into our, our kind of pigeonhole isolated realities. And it's oh. such an important piece to just be aware of the, of the subtlety of, of either way we might be, like fall, like falling or, or kind of just moving in our resonant field because our frequency is creating our reality. So yes, yes words are, are powerful and they create reality. And also like, you know, you might be able to say a whole boatload of curse words to somebody in like the, the most like sweet loving resonance. And in some ways, like the universe knows no difference. So yeah. I think it's important to remember that piece about our words, like words are powerful and like, it's the resonance behind them that's the most important um Absolutely. yeah we could probably talk all day i i so appreciate your beautiful wisdom brother and thanks for coming Thank on today i Thank think you. maybe today's a now's a good time to wrap it up is there anything yeah. you want to you want to mention about how people can reach you and what yes. you're up for now absolutely um my partner and i are founding a, a church it's called the Azulea Church of Symbiosis. And we are a universal or omnist consciousness focused church uh, that utilizes entheogens, psilocybin, and, and cacao. And we work with people on an individual and group basis. We do retreats, programs, all of that. And uh, you can find us on www.azulea.org. And um, yeah, it's just become a, a beautiful, amazing vehicle. You know, it's been a five years of actually from the inception of this idea to where it is now and constellations of people orbiting in and out. And it, it's all finally coming to alignment and it's, it's beautiful. But um, yeah, I do uh, sanctified healing work. Essentially, it's uh, sacred healing work under the church. Uh, as far as the hands-on and subtle energy work, somatic work, I do that as well. Integration work for ceremonies and uh, embodiment coaching. And uh, it's such a, a beautiful thing to share and just trying to bring the, or not trying, but choosing to bring the highest value that I can to each each individual that we support. And we also do a lot on the, Ayurvedic side, Renee has a, a background, she's raised in Ayurvedic medicine, has a master's in herbal medicine, 
Um, and so we bring a lot of the functional side, the, the daily consumption and the, the working with herbs on a shamanic level that really even something like Tulsi, uh, something like oat straw, you know, things that were like, oh, uh, it's not, you think like Anthea General, like, I want to be like blasted, like I want to be gone. <laughs> But it's like, well, how practical is that to your daily life and learning to respond or getting your nervous system into a place where you're able to respond and react? Um, and so in, in my in my coaching or my guidance, I just share, you know, some of these practices and these self-reflection work and taking inventory, you know, of the things that I'm doing that are not supporting my highest well-being and my highest purpose fulfillment in this life, the things that are and uh, offering opportunities for people to continue to educate themselves on as many things as they need to find what works for them. And uh, Azulea has been a, an amazing vehicle for that and I'm very, very excited to be bringing it to the world. Well, I know you've been working very hard for many years and I definitely have been part of the constellation coming in and out. And- oh, <laughs> Watch a lot of the, you know, the kind of just movement, alignment, your daily practice, like the beauty of how you show up in the world. And uh, I think it's just awesome to hear that you're you're finally finding it come together into fruition. And because um, I've witnessed, you know, fair fair portion of it to to see yeah. that it's been a desire for a while and a soul desire, soul purpose desire. Yes. And, um, yeah. Just being persistent, dedicated, committed to that. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome to watch. And um, Thank you. it has been an ultimate lesson of surrender and just like yeah. really allowing, you know, getting back into understanding synchronicity and timing and all of that. And it's uh, in retrospect, it all makes sense, you know, but at the time it was like trying to push a boulder up a hill, <laughs> trying to figure it out, trying to make it work. And those were my own patterns, trying to force something to happen when it wasn't meant to happen that way. Um, yeah. And yeah. to continue acknowledging the value of each of those constellations, you especially, Keenan, of just how it was able to build and how it was able to change and how it was able to shift perspective and direction to allow it to be where it's at. And that I'm super, super grateful for you and um, for, yeah, for everything and our friendship and brothership yes yes sir yeah and i love the logo in there too that, that we took to take the time to design oh yeah i think i look back oh, yeah at- that was one of the yeah. best one of keenan's most signature logos <laughs> yeah joint collaboration it was it was super fun yes. uh, i'm stoked and i i receive um blessings share my own blessings to you and your your union and can't wait to come out and enjoy some of the the land and, and get to step into some of the photographs I've seen of your community forming and in, in the sound yes. space and it's it's cool, some cool stuff. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And we we're going out to Laguna next month for it's going to be for a funeral, unfortunately, or a ceremony of life. So we're not going to have a lot of time to explore, but I'd love to get over there and check out Encinitas and your, your version of Encinitas and, uh, be on the coast and get some waves because it is highly stimulating here. Uh, but yeah, brother, thank you very much. I appreciate you and thank you for providing this platform for everyone to share what their gift is. And yeah, Luminous Possibilities has been a beautiful project to watch as well and, and evolve or to witness evolve. And thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on and re- reigniting the fire. It's been a little while since I put one out, so this will be the inaugural return to the conversations that I've been having. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Many more. Many more.